a enclosed cockpit. <laughs> Take two and go. Welcome to the de Havilland Aircraft Museum. I'm next to the replica of the DH-88 Comet Racer, de Havilland's loss-making winning plane. The beginning of this plane started in 1933. In 1933, an Australian entrepreneur called McPherson Robertson announced sponsorship for a multi-stage air flying race from England to Australia. The race would take place in October 1934. Many countries started working on modern designs to compete. However, although de Havilland was very busy, they did decide to build an aircraft for the sake of British prestige. So they announced the DH-88 Comet and three teams purchased them. Jim Mollinson and his wife, called Amy Johnson, purchased a black painted aircraft called Black Magic. Arthur Edwards from Grosvenor House had a red painted aircraft. And Bernard Rubin, a racing driver, had an aircraft painted British racing green, similar to the replica that we've got here. This was the first British aircraft to incorporate in one airframe all of the elements of a modern aeroplane. One of the innovations was an enclosed cockpit. In an era when so many aircraft were open cockpit, this was fully enclosed with space for a pilot and a second pilot who could fly the plane in, in, a, in an emergency. This was gonna be a long distance flight. You needed both pilots to be safe, both pilots to be comfortable because you're gonna be flying a long distance. The next innovation was that this was a monoplane. Again, in an era when there were so many biplanes, this was where we, they take, took use of the cantilever monoplane design. No struts, very smooth, very aerodynamically stable. Not only that, but they also incorporated flaps in the airplane wing, so you can reduce your landing speed, you get more controllability. Another innovation was the introduction of two-speed propellers. De Havilland were already at the stage that they were involved with looking at constant speed propellers. And eventually that would be part of de Havilland's future, particularly during the Second World War. But for now, they weren't able to put in constant speed propellers, so they put in two-stage propellers. But even so, that was a huge step forward from what they had previously. For many aircraft of this type, the undercarriage could be a real problem with making sure that the plane was streamlined. So de Havilland introduced a retractable undercarriage system in the DH-88 Comet to aid streamlining and improve the speed. Probably one of the most innovative features of the DH-88 Comet was the introduction of monocoque skinning and a composite design on, on the way the aircraft was put together. In the case of the Comet, it was actually built of wood, as the later Mosquito would be. So it made use of overlapping sections of wood, making sure that you had stress-free uh, design all the way through the structure. What you ended up with was a light, solid, very, very strong structure, against which you can put the very powerful engines, and you can get the speed that you wanted for the race. So when the race started, first off the line were Jim and Amy Mollison in the Black Magic. However, although they were early leaders in the race, they were forced to retire in Allahabad with engine trouble. What was left then was the DH-88 Grosvenor House, which was flown by Scott and Campbell Black. They were well ahead of the field. They went on to win in a time of less than three days, despite the last stage with one engine throttled back because of an oil pressure indicator giving a faulty low reading. In fact, Grosvenor House would have also won the handicap prize as well, but the race rules stipulated that no aircraft could win more than one prize. 
But what of the third aircraft, which was painted green in honour of Bernard Rubin, who was a British racing driver, so he painted it British racing green. This also took part in the race. It didn't win, but came in on fourth place. But the particular honour of this plane was that it not only took part in the race, it also took the film footage of the finish of the Australian race and brought that back to the UK. So what makes this a loss-making winner? Well, from the point of view of de Havilland, financially, each one of these planes was sold for £5,000, a huge amount of money at the time. Yet it cost 10 times that amount to actually do the design, development and manufacturing. So financially, de Havilland, at a time when the financial crisis of the days were just finishing, at that particular time, this was a huge investment for de Havilland that they never got back. On the other hand, it was a winning aeroplane. The red one, Grosvenor House, won the race. The green one that we've got here flew back from Australia and it was later used for mail transport. But one other thing happened with these aircraft as well. The knowledge that de Havilland had gained about building planes with closed cockpits, about building planes with composite monoplane wings and flaps, about building planes with constant speed propellers, about building planes with retractable undercarriage. All of that knowledge was then carried forward into future aircraft development. And some of that future aircraft development saw fruition when they later came to build the de Havilland Mosquito. Hope you've enjoyed this look at the winner that was also a loser. You can come and have a look at this replica actually at the de Havilland Museum. So check out our opening times on our website. Make sure you share with us on social media. And we'll look forward to seeing you in person at the museum. See you at the museum.